All right, with this forecast video update on this Friday, Jan January the 22nd, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a wonderful Friday. It has been another gorgeous day across central Florida, but some locations saw temperatures a little cooler, especially north of Orlando, because of these uh, isolated showers that formed. But we expect a little bit of rain to continue here as we head into the weekend. And as the end of a week, uh, front is going to move in as well. That's going to keep our temperatures a little on the cooler side. But uh, if you like some really warm weather, well, I think you're, I think you're going to like the forecast as we head into early next week, which I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. But uh, uh, first things first, let's go ahead and take a look and see who saw the warmest today in central Florida. <clears throat> and as you can see, temperatures mostly saw some upper 70s. Uh, and close to around 80 uh, earlier today. For example, we saw temperatures in the upper 70s in Orlando. And I think if you go farther south into Brevard County, like Palm Bay, it looks like you did hit close to 80 degrees for the high temperature this afternoon. So it's been really a warm day here in the Sunshine State. Oh, uh, down towards Kissimmee, the high temperatures did hit upper 70s this afternoon. Also, uh, high temperature over towards uh, the villages in Phoenix did hit 77. Uh, we saw some mid 70s today for areas along I-95 and some lower 70s in Ocala because of the because of the isolated showers that formed uh, this afternoon. So so that's why. And if we take a look at our current temperatures right now in the viewing area, it's still quite mild out there. Basically, we're seeing temperatures mostly still sitting in the lower 70s, including uh, right here in Orlando. And that goes for the same thing over towards Daytona Beach, and others are sitting in the mid to upper 60s. So not too bad out there as we're ending our work week. So if you got plans tonight, uh, you're pretty much you're good to go. All right, let's get a shout-out from Mike Pierce. See, I see they just uh, popped in in the house. Good to have you. Uh, and hello from Phoenix. And as always, Mike, thank you for your, for your kind words about my videos. I appreciate it. And also thank you for, stop, for stopping by and saying hello. And the next thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at is uh, future cast, because most of you want to know who could see a little bit of rain this weekend. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you that here uh, right now. And before we do that, as usual, if you are if you are just coming into uh, Facebook Live on this Friday night, again, remember, don't forget to uh, go ahead and share this feed to your Facebook followers, because remember, my motto is sharing is caring. And before we also get started, I'm going, to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and share this feed to one of my other Facebook pages. So hang on just a minute, and we'll start with the timing of the, uh, the spotty showers and, of course, how cool it's going to get on FeatureCast. All right, so here we go. So here is Feature Castle so handed in to the rest of this evening. It looks like for the next uh, couple hours we'll stay dry, but as we approach 11, uh, that's when a couple of showers could try to start to uh, sneak in in around northern Marion County. So basically from uh, just to the north of Ocala and uh, right along I-75. That's where you folks could see just a little bit of some rain as we head towards uh, that time. But as we head into the overnight, so about midnight or after midnight or so, we're expecting a couple of showers to continue as they roll from northwest to southeast. And, of course, it will continue from Marion County, but also some could develop in northeastern Lake, parts of Volusia, and Flagler County. So, so it's a little bit, of, rain, so a little, a little bit of, of some of that uh, shower activity is possible as we head into the early portions of the overnight hours. And then as we head into about 3 and 4, Still could see maybe a few showers, again, still north of Orlando, but it could impact places like uh, Sanford, or perhaps over towards DeLand, uh, Paisley, and the Villages. And then as we head towards daybreak in the morning between 6 and 7, uh, we could mostly wake up and do some sunshine. But again, if you live in portions of central Florida, again, just uh, be aware that a couple showers could uh, pop up uh, to start off the weekend. But uh, other than that, it uh, should be a, mostly a quiet start, so just keep that in mind. And then as we head into the rest of the day on Saturday, it's about around noon or so, or maybe I should say 1 o'clock, more showers will continue, especially if you go towards the coast along I-95, so Melbourne, Titusville, Cape Canaveral, back into eastern Orange County, and perhaps into portions of Osceola and Sumter counties. You may see a couple of, a, a, at least a couple of isolated showers by early afternoon, 
uh, tomorrow. And then as we hand it to about 3 and 4, still, more of these same activity continues, especially if you go maybe south of Orlando. So St. Cloud towards near Kissimmee, uh, Lakeland, and perhaps over towards the southern part of Claremont, you could see maybe a little bit, a little bit of some of that uh, isolated shower activity during the late afternoon hours tomorrow. And then heading towards uh, 6 and 7, it seems like more showers could develop and blossom, especially if we go west of I-4. So anywhere from Claremont into Apopka, uh, let's say near the Mariana into the Sumter County line. So basically, it's just not that far from where Wildwood is and over towards the southern part of the county of Sumter. You could see some more showers uh, developing as we head towards, uh, again, early evening. So if you have plans, just don't cancel or postpone anything because the showers that were that you could see, especially west of I-4 tomorrow evening, will not last much longer. So these will be quick movers. And then heading into 8 or 9 o'clock, still more of the same continues, but this time moving back into portions of Orange County, just to the south and west of uh, Orlando, back and stretching back into uh, Kissimmee, Claremont, and Leesburg, and even some over towards Brevard County. And then it looks like uh, more showers could even continue to uh, develop between 11 and midnight late tomorrow night, basically, if you live in the eastern part of Orange County, eastern Osceola, and almost most of Brevard County. So it looks like Palm Bay could get a little wet uh, as we head towards... Uh, uh, midnight tomorrow night, and even more of the same could develop over towards the northwestern half of Marion County, just to the north and west of the city of Ocala. Now, heading into uh, overnight late Saturday into early Sunday, still, it shows Featurecast wants to show more of the shower activity, especially continuing mostly areas north of Orlando. So this is 4 o'clock early Sunday morning. It shows more showers continue, mostly in the northern part of Lake County, including the villages, Paisley, over towards the eastern part of Marion County, back over towards Palm Coast and Flagler County, into Volusia and Brevard Counties. So, so, so it looks like you could, you could get a little wet to start off the morning on Sunday. And then, uh, as we approach daybreak, by 7 that morning, still, it shows more of the same. More showers continue to develop, especially in portions of Orange County, which includes the Orlando Metro, back over towards the eastern part of Orange County, and even into Brevard uh, let's say, the eastern part of Marion and up towards uh, Volusia and Flacker County. So it could be a little bit of a wet start to the day on Sunday for some of you. So if you're planning on leaving early Sunday morning to your church services, uh, might as well just take a poncho. But it's not going to rain all day long, since the rain chances will stay lower. So just note that. And then that could continue for some places throughout the morning and into the early afternoon, including some, again, in Orange County. And... Uh, it looks like everything should be clearing out by Sunday evening, except there could be some showers left over down over towards uh, Palm Bay in the southern part of Brevard County. And it looks like uh, almost almost all of us looks to be in the clear as we head into uh, not just Sunday night, but into early Monday morning. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. So how much rain you folks could see uh, in the next uh, few days as we get into the final week or well, close to the final weekend of January, but not into the final weekend just yet. That's not until next weekend. But if we take a look at the uh, totals, again, on Featurecast, I'll explain that to you. And it shows that as we head towards, at least through the weekend, and, in, and even into early Monday morning, it shows that most of us will pick up mostly between about a tenth, to, a tenth to even a quarter of an inch of rain. But notice in the, in the little green area right here over towards Titusville, it seems like you could pick up maybe just about three quarters of an inch of rain uh, as we go through uh, tomorrow and perhaps throughout the day on Sunday. So at least we at least we can we can use a little a little bit of rain in Central Florida because we haven't seen a whole lot uh, this month. So uh, we needed it. All right. So temperatures. Most of it, since, we, since we got a week front moving through here this weekend, most of you want to know how cool it's going to get for both your Saturday and Sunday. Well, here's a temperature. Here's the temperature part on Futurecast. And again, before we start that, the timing. I'm going to pinpoint the uh, temperatures location by location. And here we go. So throughout the rest of the overnight hours and, in, and into the first half of the day of Saturday, we'll wake up to morning glow temperatures in the low to mid-60s, especially from Orlando North and 
If you go south of Orlando, so from Kissimmee to uh, Lakeland, it seems like you can see temperatures uh, start off a little more cooler, but not looking too bad, with mostly upper 50s. And then heading into uh, the at least throughout the rest of the day tomorrow. So by tomorrow afternoon, we'll see the front uh, move in. And I think during the first half of the day, or most of the day, I should say, temperatures from Orlando south will mostly be in the 70s. But if you go north of Orlando, where the showers could be a little bit of a good a good shot, but still remaining isolated, uh, uh, behind the weak front, temperatures will start to uh, fall into the mid-60s, including Ocala, the Villages, Titusville, Sanford, Daytona Beach, and Palm Coast. And then it looks like the rest of us will see 60s by around 6 and 7 in the evening once the, once the weak front passes through. And then... For low temperatures late tomorrow night into early Sunday, we will stay mostly in the 60s. So, so it's not going to really get really cool since the front is going to be weaker. So that means that morning low temperatures will stay on the mild side, but <clears throat> mild side. So just keep that in mind. So low to mid 60s is expected to start off the morning that day, and then as we head into the afternoon, with the showers on and off throughout the day, we'll see temperatures warm up into the low to some spots in the mid 70s for me for mainly areas west, along and west of I-4, but if you go towards 995, temperatures will be also, uh, or only uh, in the mid to upper 60s. And then heading into the evening, uh, after sunset Sunday, we'll see temperatures uh, cool off into the 60s, and then as we end the clock towards after midnight, late Sunday to early Monday, it looks like we could see low temperatures get down maybe in the upper 50s north and others in the 60s. So uh, there you have it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the radar and see what's going on this evening in, this evening in Central Florida. And as you can see, we are looking quiet. So again, I don't expect any rain uh, for most of us tonight, but again, it could be maybe just a couple of spotty ones if you go just to the north of Orlando. So again, if you live in parts of Marion, Volusia, Lake, and Flacco counties, you can see just a little bit of a spotty shower activity overnight tonight. But again, a little bit of a good shot will hold off till tomorrow and with everybody else on Sunday. So just, just so just note that. All right, now to the GFS. Let's get into early next week. So beginning with uh, Monday, the twenty fifth of January, and it looks like we'll see most of us, uh, most of us looking dry, except if you go towards the I ninety five corridor. I can't rule out maybe a few isolated coastal showers, but other than that, we'll be mostly sunny uh, in the Sunshine State. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and as you can see, we'll be mostly on the warm side. And it's possible that we could see not just 70s, but maybe some of you could see that could even see low 80s for high temperatures by Monday for early next week. So if you're a big fan of 80s, well, I think this is your special treat that you could see that, uh, or that you could feel, you know, these temperatures like that, as you say, as we head towards uh, that day. But if you go farther up north, including Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, and South Carolina, Temperatures maybe start to warm up, uh, you know, into the 60s and 70s, which could feel like an early spring, at least to end the month of January. So it'll be feeling, feeling pretty warm uh, throughout the southeast as we head into, again, that day. All right, now heading into Tuesday of next week. This is for January 26th, and as you can see here on the GFS, we'll be looking dry in the state. So... Orlando and the rest of Central Florida looking mostly sunny, but the rain activity will stay farther up towards the north and west. That could uh, bring maybe just a little bit of some showers across portions of the Mississippi Valley region, but I don't expect any of that to happen here uh, in the peninsula uh, if the GFS is correct. And again, we stay warm in the upper 70s and low 80s for highs. So looking at another warm day, not just for Monday, but even into Tuesday of next week. And even temperatures will stay warm as well if you go farther up north with mostly 60s and 70s in and around the Mississippi Valley region. So early spring is going to be coming, uh, at least for a while, in the southeast. So I think we'll definitely enjoy these uh, gorgeous temperatures. All right, now heading into uh, the middle of next week. This is for Wednesday, January the 27th. And right now it looks like we'll keep the weather dry in central Florida with more of the way of sunshine, but notice on the GFS that more rain will, uh, some of that more rain could uh, could develop in the southeast, but just north of our state, except for the Panhandle. But mostly it's the Mississippi Valley region that will see a good sh a good shot of some rain and maybe even a few thunderstorms, and that could be ahead of another cold front that we're gonna have to watch closely too. So.
So, so just uh, keep that in mind. And uh, temperatures for us, look at the look at looky there. We even continue to warm things up, not just in the 70s, but maybe mo most of us will hit low to possibly even middle 80s for high temperatures. So even much warmer uh, temperatures is expected as we head towards the middle of the work week next week. But the next front, uh, as you can see, will be just to the north of where we live, and that's going to bring temperatures cooler and even a bit soggy, I guess you could call it, with mostly 40s and 50s and 60s. So, uh, yeah. Now heading into uh, a week from yesterday, this is, this is for Thursday, January the 28th, and as you can see that the uh, system, the next system as a matter of fact, will bring just a little bit of a shower activity for portions of central Florida, but for now the rain just looks to be low at about 20%. Right now the highest chance will continue to stay north, especially across the southern and eastern half of Alabama and, the, and throughout most of Georgia and South Carolina, but the rain could be heavy at times, especially if we go towards South Carolina where it could bring maybe 2 to 4 inches or maybe locally higher, so... Could bring maybe a little bit of some flooding concerns up around the state of South Carolina, but none of that is happening here in central Florida, thank goodness. But we still can use maybe a little bit of more rain since we haven't seen a whole lot this month. And uh, temperatures for highs down below for us, and as you can see, that uh, with the uh, with with a little bit of rain happening, the front will start to move in, and that's going to bring temperatures a little cooler, dropping from the 80s down into the lower 70s and upper 60s. So, so yes, we. So we, so we transition from warm to cool by the time we get into, again, the later part of next week. But if you go farther up north into the Mississippi Valley region, temperatures will be much cooler and perhaps even much chillier as the numbers drop into the 40s and 50s. All right, now heading into the end of next week. This is a week from today, Friday, January the 29th, and as you can see, there may be a little bit of a shower activity left over during the first half of the day, just south and east of Orlando, but other than that, we'll, we'll be seeing the uh, conditions dry out as the uh, second front does uh, push on farther south. And uh, temperatures for highs down below it looks to be, uh, yep, feeling more, but at least it's going to feel a bit more like winter again as temperatures drop from the 80s, 70s, down into the upper 50s and low 60s for highs. So don't put those winter jackets or clothes away quite yet because we're not done with the winter uh, season yet, basically. Still got more ways to go. But, but yes, you definitely need to have those winter clothes uh, bundled in handy if you're going to be outdoors uh, next Friday afternoon. But as far as the low temperatures go for the morning of next Saturday, let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS. And it shows as of right now that it, it it doesn't appear to be as cold, which is a good thing. But it could be a bit chilly once you go farther to the west and northwest of Orlando. So that's going to bring temperatures into the 40s, especially in Marion County, into portions of Lake and Sumter. But I think we're going to stay in the 50s for lows to start off next Saturday morning. So thankfully not as cold. But if you go farther to the north, especially across the eastern half of Alabama, into Georgia and South Carolina, it's going to feel more like winter as temperatures start to as temperatures do begin to drop next Saturday morning down into the upper 20s and perhaps low to mid 30s. And uh, as we head into the rest of the day of next Saturday the 30th, it seems like that uh, we could see maybe a couple of one or two isolated coastal showers mainly along the coast of Brevard County, but other than that we'll just keep the conditions dry with more in the way of sunshine and uh, temperatures uh, down below that. Looks to be uh, warming up slightly, but still looking on the cooler side as we get it back into the mid 60s here in the uh, in the state. And then heading into next Sunday, the last day of January, 30 the 31st, basically. Again, most of us will continue to see mo more in the way of mostly sunny, mostly sunny skies, but if you go towards the coast of I-95, especially from Volusia into Brevard counties, a couple of uh, quick-moving isolated coastal showers are not out of the question, but other than that, everything will be mostly on the quieter side. But there is another system that's going to de develop from the north and west that could rain another round of some rain across Alabama and Mississippi, and that could be ahead of another cold front we're going to have to watch also. But still kind of too early to give specific details, but... As usual, it could change as we get closer, but we'll start to warm things up into the 70s again by the last day of January, so if you got some plans outdoors, 
think it could be a good time to, uh, you know, just get out and enjoy the fresh air. And even temperatures will start to warm things back into the 60s as well across most of the Mississippi Valley region. Now, heading into the first day of February, which is the following Monday, and right now it seems like the GFS wants to point out maybe just a few isolated showers, again, mainly just along the coast of Brevard County, but other than that, we'll just keep the weather dry. The good chance of rain is going to stay farther to the north and west, especially across Georgia, South, South Carolina, and the southeastern half of Alabama, but I don't see too anything significant, so it's just, just, it's just a plain old rain event, if it's right. And our temperatures will continue to warm things up into the upper 70s and maybe getting back into the lower 80s for some of you on the first day of the new month. And I think the chance to see 80s will be basically just to the north and east, especially in Volusia, Flackler, and Brevard counties in the areas in dark red. But temperatures will continue to feel more like early spring across the Mississippi Valley region with mostly in the way of 60s and low 70s. So looking pretty nice, at least to end January and to start off February. All right, as we approach Groundhog Day, which is Tuesday the 2nd, as we approach or as we enter the land of voodoo country, uh, we'll keep the weather dry as usual in central Florida with more of the way of mostly sunny skies, but show, it does show that there could be some showers to continue in and around the I-10 corridor and the panhandle of Florida and even across portions of southeast Georgia and the southeastern half of South Carolina, but it's nothing too major to worry about. And uh, our temperatures below that will continue to stay warmer, but we drop a little below 80 degrees by Groundhog Day. So instead of seeing that, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see mostly uh, mid to upper 70s. And that continues not just for here in the state, but also across the, the uh, Mississippi Valley region with uh, uh, 70s in Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina, and perhaps some 60s in and around Mississippi. And here is Wednesday, February 3rd, and if, again, right now, weather the weather looks to stay dry, but I can't rule out maybe a couple of coastal showers along the coast of Brevard County, but nothing too major to worry about, but it looks like a bit of a good chance that rain will redevelop across the Mississippi Valley region, so that's something we'll watch, but too early to tell since we're in the land of voodoo country, but we continue to stay warm in the mid to upper 70s to about near 80 as we approach that day, but Again, there might be a third front that's going to try to uh, die from north to south. That gets, that's going to allow temperatures to really cool things down from warm to, or basically from 70s, I should say, down into the 50s and 60s. So that's something we need to, uh, again, keep an eye out. But again, it's too early, it's too early to still, it's still too early to give specific details. But, you know, it could really change once we get closer to the first full week of the new month. And heading into two weeks from yesterday, this is for Thursday, February 4th, and as you can see that uh, a bit of a good chance of rain will start to come back across the northern part of the state of Florida, especially around Jacksonville to the uh, Tallahassee areas. But uh, for us, most of us here, especially right here in Orlando, it, lo it looks to be mostly on the quieter side. But again, it's just too early to tell, so that's why things could really change. But we'll keep... The temperature's warmer, with mostly in the way of 70s to close to 80, but again, the third front will continue to uh, uh, come into the south, and that's going to bring temperatures cooler and chilly with 40s, 50s, and 60s in and around uh, Alabama, Georgia, and perhaps over towards South Carolina. And as we take you to, as we take you to two weeks from today, Friday, February fifth, and as you can see, that some coastal showers will continue along I ninety five, but it's just a, a at least a spottier activity. But other than that, we'll keep most of our inland areas dry, uh, especially here in Orlando, also. But notice in the GFS that a good shot of rain will continue in the northeastern part of the state, including Jacksonville and across most of central and east Georgia. And uh, high temperatures for that day looks to be again. Uh, remain warm. So it looks like the third front will be uh, weakening once it gets close to Florida. So it looks like it may not pass through us. So instead, we'll just stay on the warmer category with mostly in the way of 70s, but some, again, it could even hit low 80s as we approach the first Friday of February. So again, we'll keep an, out, we'll keep the, we'll keep an eye out. Thanks for you guys in case if anything changes.
And here is Saturday, February 6th, and as you can see, look at that. A big system is going to develop from the west, and ahead of it here in Florida, especially central Florida, will be mostly on the drier side, but I can't pull out maybe a few showers along I-75 in places like Marion and parts of Sumter counties, but the big chance of rain is going to, is going to be staying to the north and west of here, and, that's going to, and that could bring maybe one to perhaps three inches of rain across Mississippi and Alabama, so some heavy rains could be a possibility with that uh, stronger system. But as far as temperatures go for highs down below, that could be ahead of another front. But ahead of it will still be warm in the 70s to lower 80s here in the Sunshine State. But on the backside of the following front, that's going to knock down temperatures from warm to chilly. So from 60s, 70s, down into the 30s and 40s and maybe to near 50. So again, like I've said, winter is not quite done yet. And last but not least, as we end the uh, forecast for Sunday, February 7th, it looks like uh, the front will get, will, get, will get closer to Florida. And for us, that could bring maybe just a little bit of some shower activity here in the Sunshine State. So we'll call for about a 30 to a 40 percent coverage of some scattered showers for some of us if the GFS is right. And temperatures below that looks to be, look at that, once, we, once the uh, third front uh, gets closer to us, that's going to bring temperatures uh, north of Orlando behind it down into the 50s, but ahead of it, still warm in the 60s and 70s. So, again, we'll keep an eye out, thanks for you guys, in case if anything changes, which it will likely, it may likely happen to kick off uh, February. All right, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and end this video for tonight, so... Uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy your weekend. I'll be back here again Monday night, same time between 8 and 8.30 for another live update with the weather in Central Florida. And I'll continue as normally. My posting my notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoy again your weekend. Hope you enjoy this, uh, you know, these beautiful temperatures. And, of course, be sure to stay dry, you know, at least not just tomorrow, but also on Sundays, as we'll see a little bit of rain for some of you. And uh, also remember to take care of yourselves and each other. And uh, God bless you all.